In this video, we will be talking about smoothness of the force feedback response from the wheelbase and its main contributors, which is cogging and friction of the motor. Hi, I'm Frank, Senior Systems Engineer at VRS. And I'm Dennis, Product Engineer at VRS. Have you ever experienced choppiness of your wheelbase when you're turning into a corner? Like you literally you're, you're turning a cogwheel? If yes, then you don't have a VRS wheelbase and this video is for you. Let's start with cogging. In early days wheelbases and entry level models from today, you can still find cogwheels and gears used to create force feedback. With introduction of direct drive technology, we don't have gears anymore, but the cogging effect is still not fully gone. To demonstrate this, I brought this small electric motor. It doesn't have any gears within it, but still, when I try to rotate it, you can see it moves in steps, choppy movement, and I can feel it with my hand when I try to rotate it. Making an electric motor that rotates and operates smoothly without any cogging is a separate field of research on its own, mainly driven by robotics. In DFP15, we are using latest generation permanent magnet synchronous motor from industrial robotics application. This allows us to achieve great levels of force feedback smoothness, and we've built this setup today to demonstrate this to you. Frank, would you please show us how do we measure this? Sure. Let me explain what you see here. We have a DFP15. It is configured to produce five newton meters of torque. On the other side, we have an industrial servo drive. I will use it to spin the shaft. And in between this, we have a so-called torque transducer. It can measure the amount of torque between its two ends. And we are visualizing its result on the oscilloscope. What I will do now is I will call, I will command this device to make a rotation, which will force the DFP15 in its end stop. And in its end stop, it is supposed to produce the five newton meters of torque. And we will have a look at the screen how well it can do this. You can see it already made it. Let's now have a look. Let's now have a look at the screen. You can see on the top a dotted line that is indicating 15 newton meters. That's the maximum that the DUP15 can do. And the beginning was zero, so you can visualize the span that it does when it's going from zero to full. And you can see the five newton meter line and watch closely that you can barely see this five newton meter line to show any ripple or not smoothness. But still it's there, of course, like nothing is ideal. This is a real device. So what we will do now is we will zoom in and show the amount of ripple in a more zoomed way, like we will zoom in vertically. What you see now is a zoomed in representation. You can see there is some ripple, there is some up and down going. And if you look at below, you see a mean value of about 10 millivolts. As this device is, is producing voltage, we need to convert this into torque. There is a factor of four involved. That means this 10 millivolts means a torque ripple of just 0.04 newton meters. If we calculate this as a percentage of the full scale that this device does, it's just 0.3%, like virtually nothing. We are very proud of this, and we truly believe that this is among the best, and if not the best result among all wheelbases out there in the world. And now just for fun, what happened now is you can see it's still rotating. It is rotating the wheelbase into the end stop over and over again. Once I release this motor, what will the wheelbase do? It will try to recover and regain its real estate. Frank has just shown you our way to benchmark the cogging. In other words, the flatness of the force feedback produced by the wheelbase when rotating. Now, let's look at another parameter that is impacting the smoothness of the force feedback when driving. It is friction. Friction can be perceived as a stickiness in the steering wheel when you try to rotate it without driving, standing still. It can always be increased in the configuration tool, but it can never go lower than the inherent friction of the motor itself. This means that the friction will differ from one motor to the other and from one wheelbase supplier to the other. To measure the friction of the FP15, we are going to use the same test setup as before, 
but instead of running the DFP15 into the hard stop, the end stops are disabled fully. This means that shaft is able to rotate freely, and when I do that, you can see that nothing is preventing rotation except of the internal friction of the industrial servo drive. Value proportional to this friction is now displayed on the oscilloscope. Now, if I rotate from the other side, nothing prevents rotation except for the DFP15 friction. And you can see on the oscilloscope that this is lower compared to the industrial servo. Now, to make the actual measurement, instead of driving it by hand, I will command the servo drive to make the rotation and we will make single capture to avoid capturing the noise. Let me enable the servo drive and send the command to rotate. Now let me grab the picture for you so we can put it on the screen. Now you should see the picture on the screen bigger. What we are interested in measuring is the amount of friction generated when moving from standstill into one direction. But what we are measuring with the setup is the friction generated when rotating from one direction into the other. This change in direction allows us to eliminate static error produced by the sensor, but this also gives us double the friction value. Now to convert the measured value into the actual Newton meters, we first multiply it by 4, which is the conversion ratio of the sensor, and then divide it by 2, because what we are looking for is half of what we are measuring. If we do that, we take 55 millivolts multiplied by 2, we get 110 milli Newton meters, or 0.11 Newton meter, which is 0.8% of the maximum torque that wheelbase can generate. This is half of the friction that DFP20 has with the QR connect adapter. If we compare relative values relative to the maximum torque of the wheelbases, this is an improvement of 33%. We think this is a competitive value and it should allow you to feel every little detail of the track. In today's video, we've demonstrated how do we benchmark the force feedback smoothness by measuring cogging and friction. Cogging tests show you the force feedback flatness generated by the wheelbase and friction test shows you the friction value when wheelbase is spinning freely. We are really proud of what we have achieved with this new product and the level of smoothness that it delivers. Because that means there, that there is nothing that distracts you from what you actually want to achieve and that is to get fast faster. Thank you for watching this. We hope you learned something. Bye now. Bye.